So let's look at variances now. So remember the variance is difference between uh, standard and actual perform, uh, performance. I already explained that in variance analysis. So let's focus on variance now. Variance could be two main types. It could be a favorable variance or it could be an adverse or unfavorable variance. A favorable variance is a variance that is favorable, which means it is liked. Uh, an adverse variance is a variance that is not liked. What is a favorable variance? What could be a favorable variance? It could be that we have incurred less cost than standard. Or it could be that we have incurred more we have earned more income than standard. When cost is less than standard and income is more than standard, we have a favorable variance. An adverse variance is when we have cost more than standard and when we have income less than standard. So the more the income, uh, the less the cost, the better it is. The more the cost, the less the income, the worse it is. So variances is divided in five main categories uh, in basics. We have the material variance, uh, labor variance, fixed or head variance, and sales variance. And we have variable or head variance as well. So four of them is cost, and one of them is uh, income. So let's look at material variance. So uh, material variance is divided in three parts. One is main and then main is divided in two parts. So in main part, which is material cost variance or material total variance, we want to see whether we have incurred more or less cost per unit. So our focus is on unit, which is total. So if we have incurred more per unit, we have adverse, if we have less, uh, if we have incurred less cost per unit, then we have favorable. Now there are two reasons why you would incur more or less per unit. Uh, and the reason is material price variance and material usage variance. In price variance, we want to see whether we bought material cheaper or expensive. If we buy material expensive, then it would be more cost, it would be adverse. If we buy material cheaper, it would be less cost, it would be favorable. The second thing we want to see is how much material we used. That is material usage variance. So we want to see whether we have used material more or less. If we use more material, uh, we would have adverse variance. If we use less material, we would have favorable variance. Okay, so the more, uh, the expensive you buy the material, the more you use, the more will be the cost per unit. The cheaper you buy the material, the less you use, the less will be the cost per unit. But remember, material price variance and material usage variance shouldn't be looked in isolation. They are not separate. They are related. If you buy material cheaper, it usually means that it is lower quality. And when material is lower quality, it is used more. So when your price variance is favorable, you would expect the usage variance to be adverse. If your price variance is adverse, uh, you would expect the usage variance to be favorable. Okay? Both of them can be favorable in an example. Both of them can be adverse as well. But what would make sense uh, is if one is favorable, another one would be adverse. Okay? Next, we have labor variance. Just like material variance, in total we want to look at uh, the labor cost, uh, 
uh, which is per unit. So we want to see whether we have spent more or less per unit. If we spend more, uh, then it would be adverse. If we spend less, it would be favorable. Remember, in variance analysis chapter, we assume that labor is paid on hour basis. If labor is paid per unit basis, then these variances don't make sense. So that's why I've written here in the bracket that we assume that the uh, labor is paid on hour basis. If uh, labor is paid on piecework basis, then these variances don't make sense. Okay, so the assumption would be that labor is paid on hour basis. So the reason we would uh, spend more or less per unit uh, is two things. One, labor rate variance and another labor efficiency variance. So in labor rate variance, we want to see whether we have given employee higher per hour or lower per hour, the rate per hour. If we give them higher rate, it will be more cost, it would be adverse. If we give them lower rate, it would be less cost, so it would be favorable. And efficiency variance, we want to see whether employee has worked quicker or slower. If employee works quicker, they would spend less time. If they spend less time, that means unit would cost less because their salary would become less. If they spend, if they work slower, it means they spend more hours, uh, then it would be adverse because their salary becomes higher. So the lower your rate is, the less hours the employee work, the more favorable will be your variance. The higher the rate, the lower the efficiency, the adverse it is, okay? So lower efficiency, a higher efficiency, and lower rate means good. But again, labor rate and efficiency shouldn't be looked in uh, isolation just like material. Usually when your rate is favorable, your efficiency is going to be adverse. Because if your rate is favorable, that would mean that employee is lower skilled. And lower skilled employee takes more time. So if your rate is favorable, your efficiency would be adverse because employee would be taking more time. But if your rate is favorable, that would mean your employee is high skilled and they would take less time because of which your efficiency is going to be favorable. Okay, so if one is adverse, the other is expected to be favorable. So this is how it would make sense. But in exam, both of them could be favorable, both of them could be adverse, okay? Next, we have variable overheads. So in, in total, which is variable cost or variable total variance, we want to look at per unit. So we want to see whether per unit we have incurred more or less cost. Again, if we spend more cost adverse, if we spend less cost, favorable. So the reason we spend more or less cost per unit is uh, variable or is expenditure variance and variable or head efficiency variance. In expenditure variance, we want to see whether per hour overhead spent is more or less. And one thing else I want to explain is that variable overheads is going to be based on labor hours in variance analysis chapter, okay? So you would assume that it is based on labor hours. It will be given in question that $3 or whatever per hour, which means labor hours. So uh, in expenditure variance, we want to see whether overhead spent per hour work by the employee is more or less than standard. If it is more, it is adverse. If it is less, it is favorable. In efficiency, we want to look at, just like labor efficiency, we want to look at labor efficiency here as well. Why? Because variable overheads is based on labor hours. If labor spends more time, it would mean we have more overheads. If employee spends less time, it would mean we would incur less overheads. So variable overhead efficiency and labor efficiency is very similar. The only difference is the rate. In questions I answer, you would understand. It is very similar to calculate. But now we are only focusing on theoretical part. Remember, I have seen uh, in many of the videos uh, 
uh, where they have shown formulas to remember these variances. You forget those. It is not easy to remember that. Once you understand variances conceptually, you are not going to forget it. And also, you will understand it conceptually, you will be able to comment it, especially when you go to F5. In F5 level, they don't just want you to calculate variance, they want you to explain what it means. Okay, so it is very important to understand it conceptually. Okay, next, we have fixed overhead variance. So in fixed overhead variance, again, fixed overhead uh, could be based on machine hours or labor hours or per unit, but in variance analysis chapter, it is going to be based on labor hours. Okay, variable overheads and fixed overheads is going to be based on labor hours. They will give you a rate per hour, which would mean labor hour. So in total, we have under or absorption. So from absorption costing, you would remember, we calculate something called under or absorption. What is under or absorption? Under or absorption is when absorbed overheads uh, is more or less than actual. What is absorbed? Absorbed is based on budget. So when our total budget is different than actual, we call it under or absorption. Okay, That's, that is the total fixed overhead variance. When they ask you to calculate total fixed overhead variance, under or absorption is total fixed overhead variance. When we have over absorbed, it is favorable because over absorbed means absorbed is more than actual. Actual is less. So if actual is less, we have favorable variance. Under absorbed is adverse variance because under absorbed means that we have incurred, uh, we have absorbed less, which means actual is more. If actual is more, we have adverse variance. Now, if you remember, the reason why there is under or absorption were two things, two things, there were three reasons, but in those three reasons, there were two components, budgeted overheads and budgeted activity. When budgeted overheads does not equal your actual overheads, and when budgeted activity does not equal actual activity, then you will have under or absorption. So fixed overheads is further divided into those two components. So in total expenditure variance, we want to see whether our budgeted overheads is more or less than actual overheads. So if actual overheads is more than total budgeted, we have adverse variance. If actual overheads is less than total budgeted, we have favorable variance. And in total volume variance, we are looking at activity. If activity is more than budgeted, we have favorable variance. Why? Because if activity is more, then the cost per unit be decreases. When the cost per unit decreases, so you will have less cost. So you would have favorable answer. And when actual activity is, actual activity means production here. So when production is less than budgeted, then our cost per unit would be higher. So it would give us adverse answer. So the total is under or absorption, it is further divided into expenditure and volume. So when you add expenditure and volume, it will give you this total. But this is according to absorption costing. According to marginal costing, this is the only fixed overhead variance. Okay? Labor material variable overheads is the same. Fixed overheads only has expenditure range. So when they say uh, uh, we are using marginal costing, calculate total fixed overheads. So you have to calculate expenditure variance. When they say we are using absorption costing, calculate total fixed overheads, you will have under or absorption costing. Under or absorb. Okay? Now volume variance can further be divided in two more parts. From labor, accounting for labor chapter, you would remember three ratios. We had production volume ratio, uh, capacity ratio, and efficiency ratio. Remember efficiency, we already explained whether employee works slower or faster. And in capacity, we want to see for how many hours employee worked. The more hours employee work, generally the more would be production. So efficiency and capacity multiplied gives you the overall volume, which is production. So I already explained what is efficiency because we are using labor hours. So volume efficiency would mean 
uh, slower or faster work by labor, which I already explained. I don't have to explain it again. It would be exact same thing here. In volume capacity variance, uh, we are looking at total hours. So if we worked more hours than budget, we would have favorable variance. Why? Because generally when you work for more hours, you would expect more units to be produced. If you work for less hours, then you would expect less units to be produced. Okay? Remember, efficiency and capacity are two separate things. Don't mix them. Efficiency talks about time spent. Capacity talks about time worked. Okay? So efficiency, we are looking at how much time we should have spent on the unit that we have produced. But in capacity, we are looking at how much time we have worked. Does it make sense? So when you take efficiency and capacity and you add it together, it would give you total volume variance. And lastly, we have sales variance and sales price variance. Uh, the previous variances we studied were all cost. Now this one is income. So in sales price variance, we want to see whether we sold unit expensive or cheap. If we sold them cheap, it would mean less revenue, it would be adverse. If we sold them expensive, it would be more revenue, it would be favorable. Okay? And then in sales volume variance, uh, which according to absorption costing is called sales volume profit variance, and according to marginal costing is called uh, sales volume contribution variance. So in sales volume variance, we want to see whether we, we sold more units or less units than standard uh, budget. If we sold more units, there would be more revenue. If we sold less units, there will be less revenue. Okay? So it is the same uh, in marginal and absorption costing. The only difference is that we multiplied by contribution and uh, marginal costing, and we multiplied by uh, profit and absorption costing. But remember, these price variance and volume variance is linked. If you sell something cheaper, it is sold more. So if your price variance is adverse, you would expect volume variance to be favorable. If we sell something expensive, it is sold less. So when your price variance is favorable, your volume variance is expected to be adverse. Okay? So this is it uh, for theoretical part of the basic variances.